it's amazing. Um, as I, I think I said last time, I mean, it's, it's been a real journey. Uh, Darwin keeps you right in the, at the level of the heart for a sustained period. (laughs) Yeah, no, it, it's just great uh, for me because it reminds me of being at two Castine street. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. A a lot of these things you, you, you don't realize how beautiful thing, you know, what these people were, you know, and, and it kind of, here it comes through in this book, that greater inner expansiveness that he he invites people into. You know, Jeff, you were talking about uh, reading out loud that that effort and grace. Reading out loud had a, a, it seemed to have have a different effect, and most certainly it does for me. And and also when uh, the Northwest group reads God speaks out loud, we do it in a day and. It gets totally assimilated differently when I hear someone else read it, and yeah. I'm following along, and it, it's amazing to me. It's, I mean, it's, it's like, wow, you know. Yeah. That's why That's- I encourage these reading groups on Zoom. It's, it's so yeah. helpful. Yeah. It, it's incredible. It's really incredible. So you do know there's a God Speaks reading group, and there's also a Beams group, and there's going to start. Um, oh. I think after Beams are going to do Listen Humanity, but I'm hoping to get together a discourses meeting. So, well, that's a good idea too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's a Mara Meher group, which is fabulous because you know, to hear it out loud is very helpful. Yeah. 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 I've never even got through it, and I've got the books. <laughs> They've already made it through the first volume, and and you know, wow. this is one of those early meetings that we started on Zoom. So. I guess it's wow. been months, but it doesn't feel yeah. like months. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the time go when there's no time? I'll, I'll read this, um, this poem. I'll tell you, <clears throat> there were uh, the, the mother and father of Rosie, Richard, who wrote this. Uh, her father was the one you see in the photographs who played the bagpipes for Baba in 1931 when he went over to East Chalicombe. <clears throat> on the west coast of of England, and uh, th- his name was Kenneth Ross, and he married Joseph. He met and through Bob, he met uh, Josephine. <clears throat> I forgot what her last name was. He came with her mom <clears throat> and met Baba at Harmon on Hudson in 1931. And Baba then asked. Uh, Josephine to stay on for a year <clears throat> and she wrote a number of poems and everything but they had three daughters one of them was Anne that she we see her on zoom Rose Rosie and the other was a Margarita <clears throat> so this is Rosie's what Rosie wrote she I, I, I got her to send this to me <clears throat> and she met Baba in I uh, like to say probably the uh, uh, Delmonico Hotel in 1956. And she was seven years old and she went and met, went before Bob, went and, <clears throat> and met Baba. And this was her experience written, written from later on in her life. <clears throat> Meeting Baba by Rose, Rosie Richards. I was seven. Do I remember? Oh, yes, forever. All time ceased. I walked into a great circle of light and complete protection. No one, no thing, no sound, only the essence and the voice of the silent one. How could that be? What did he say? Where was I? Enclosed in light, where no harm could penetrate, no harm. I was lifted up. The circle was beyond where I could see. Great love light blinded me with the enormity of this happening. I was seven. Do I now understand how incredible this event was on eternity's clock? Have problems vanished? No. 
Have challenges eluded me? No. Do I cry? Yes. Tears of joy, fear, love, hope for the less sensitive humanity. Have I been hurt? Yes, deeply by many people. Am I vulnerable? Oh, yes. Vulnerable to the pain my physically and mentally fragile family have endured. Vulnerable to the horror of man harming man and to anger and unkindness in our world. Why have I been so blessed? I have this knowing. I have love. I am so small. He is so great. What can I give? The only gift worth sharing. That in all the turmoil, misunderstandings, confusions, mistakes, wars, tumult, there is hope. There is love. How can I be so brazen? I have a responsibility because I glimpsed God, the Lord may hear. He is real. I sat on the lap of God. <clears throat> so that's probably from 1956. I bet she wrote this maybe 10 years ago, something like that. Was that in spring at the Delmonico Hotel or late winter? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, July. Oh, okay. July right. 56. Okay. Wow. And that was Rose Richards. Wow. Beautiful. <clears throat> As a little girl meeting Baba at seven. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Janet, there's some time today or this in this process that you we could talk more about what you've said various times how how um darwin always said the problem with people is that they think they're small and they're big yeah only i'm paraphrasing obviously. yeah i i just wonder how through the years that you've been familiar with his saying that that has registered inside i I'm still like, there's the whole thing about the ego being big. And I know that's not what he's talking about. Yeah. So, so kind of more how, how you, how it hits you on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. May, well, well, maybe we can uh, approach that, but it, it's the in, creating the inner space, not, not the ego space, but the inner, the, the inner heart space because we do have everyone in our hearts already. It, it, it just seems like they're outside. You know, uh, if you love children and you, you like to be with them and all that they bring up, after a while you have a whole playground inside of you. <clears> that <throat> kids can kind of go in and out of you because you hold that space. I mean, a, a loving open space for them. But at all parts of life, I mean, Eric used to say, this whole world is yours, but you have to claim it. Through love, you bring what's outside, inside. <clears throat> so that if you love somebody, they're now inside of you. If you love them deeply. I, I mean, I give the example, if you love birds and, and you get to know their names and their songs and their habitats and everything, after a while, not only are they flying outside of you, but they're flying inside of you. So bit by bit, you incorporate what's outside of you, inside of you. So the spiritual path is not like going from A to B. It's expansion of being. Your being includes love for the things that you didn't, you know, Baba said, you can love me most by loving those whom you cannot love. So you go on expanding. <clears throat> I've got a, a, a great quote here from, uh, which I'll read, uh, written by Mani. <clears throat> Why were the saints saints? <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, well, bring that up again if there's time, you know. Well, that, that was very helpful. Yeah. That was very helpful. <clears throat> it, it takes audacity because we're, we're kind of taught 
to think of yourself as small, little old me. But Baba did not like modesty. It takes audacity to say that, to think that others are really already inside of you. And it's just a matter of time before you experience that. S especially when you love somebody and that if you have a daughter, that daughter is now inside and part of your life. <clears throat> but it's like bringing more and more uh, from the outside through love to the inside. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of well worth um, uh, <clears throat> stopping the camera on that subject. But uh, Shraddha last week. Oh, read that. Beautiful. She read that um, <clears throat> beautiful thing from. Maybe she could read it again before we have a uh, before we have a moment of silence. Shraddha, do you have that with you? Um, I don't right now, but I can dig it up fast. Uh huh. But but Janet, you heard that last. I did. I yeah. did. <clears throat> uh huh. I, I think I've heard it twice, but I really need to hear it a third time. <laughs> okay. No, this is. <clears throat> I mean, I told you, uh, you know, over the year. I mean, over the months over the years that um, I once asked, you know, Darwin, what is the biggest mistake the Baba lovers are making? And he said, they think of themselves as small and they remain small. Think, think big, think outside even the traditional spiritual box. So it, it's interesting that Shraddha found this quote that bears that out right uh, <clears throat> with Baba's words. Yeah. Okay, so it, it treats transform lower self into higher self. Am I audible? Uh, fine by me. Uh, everyone okay? Raise your hand if it's she can hear. Okay, <clears throat> you awesome. are audible. Okay, great. Uh, so, so here goes. Someone asked Hafiz what spirituality meant and he answered in one ode. Unless you go against your lower self, you cannot unite with your higher self. Now, what is the lower self? That which makes you think you are small. That which makes you feel that you are not satisfied, not happy. That which makes others see you as small. So the meaning of going against the lower self is to transform this in quite the opposite direction. Be that which makes you look big and makes others see you as big. Remain pleased and contented, happy and satisfied. When you are displeased, unhappy or upset and moody, it is your lower self asserting itself. People always put the blame for their dissatisfaction and suffering on others. But the fact is, when one suffers, it is one's own fault. Mansari became excited, she was angry and suffered. And she laid it all on Elizabeth, Norina and Lucky. But if she had gone beyond the lower self, she would have taken it calmly, swallowed it and remained unaffected. If you are firm, nothing will upset you. If you try, you will surely have it. I do not want any repression, but I do want transformation. I never for one moment say that you must not get angry. Don't be confused. You must get angry when the occasion arises, but at once you must get it out of your head. If you're not hungry, to fast has no meaning. Spiritual freedom has to be won by oneself, for oneself through watchful and unfailing war against the lower self and the lower desires. Lord Meher, page 2143. Beautiful words. <clears throat> and, and, it, uh, and I would say Darwin, <clears throat> he, uh, that's, I don't know if he, uh, well, he was with Baba before that was, but before Bob spoke that, but that was Darwin's orientation. 
think big. Don't worry about your ego. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't, you know, like, it, oh, if I expand and everything, then it's just going to feed my ego. Well, it doesn't have to. <laughs> you might have more empathy and compassion for others if you expand rather than ego. <laughs> That's kind of, I'm giving you kind of Darwin's orientation. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is an interesting line by Baba through Narina, and it says, See me live in you in small ways of life, the everyday ritual of selfless harmony, the unsatisfied element in you is God who needs you to be like him. Beautiful. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's, it's so it's not all about not being satisfied, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> what do you think of this sentence? Un it, it follows. Unsatisfied humor is God when winning in you the, the dual show of I. Say that again, but a little yeah. farther back from your uh, okay. microphone. Okay. Unsatisfied humor is God when winning in you the dual show of I. Okay. Okay, let's have a few uh, moments of silence. <clears throat> Jay Baba. <clears throat> Okay, I think most everybody uh, is familiar. And, uh, <clears throat> we read a, a, a section. Andrea, will, I mean Angela, will call uh, on you, <clears throat> and don't be shy about chiming in. You know, it's not like uh, this isn't your uh, your uh, orals and your dissertation. This is. <clears throat> oh, hey, Katie's there. Good. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, one of the things that, um, I just kind of going back in, in 1971, when I first went to India, <clears throat> I was, I was a little bit apprehensive, kind of, <clears throat> I'd only been to Baba for a few years, <clears throat> and I, I was a little apprehensive that the Mandali who had spent most of their lives with Baba would be these spiritual giants. And I, I didn't know what to expect. And I was so relieved when I, when I found they were like my favorite aunts and uncles. I mean, infinitely relieved <clears throat> because, <clears throat> and, you know, rather than thinking that I, I, I kind of naively thought I would have to scale these great spiritual heights to reach Baba, <clears throat> instead, right before me were these, you know, very deeply human, uh, approachable Baba's Mandali. They were so loving and inclusive and they kind of brought us in like intimate family. <clears throat> and the thing that, that I felt is that, and because we've been talking about these divine uh, qualities, they embodied these <clears throat> qualities, Baba had awakened them in them. And I could see that, well, I understand what these qualities are. I mean, they're not some un, unattainable spiritual state or plane. <clears throat> they are within our reach. <clears throat> it's only a matter of time for Baba to uh, awaken these in us. And, it's, and uh, Eric used to quote Baba um, quite often over the years when I would be there <clears throat> To be natural, these are Baba's words, to be natural is most godly. You know, he didn't say to be spiritual is most godly, he said to be natural. And as I say, the Mandali <clears throat> were the embodiment of that. They were really fun to be with, entertaining. They took a real active and personal interest in our lives. And 
as we're doing here, we, we're, able, we're capable of doing these things ourselves. So <clears throat> it's only a matter of time before those divine qualities can live and manifest through us for, uh, coming directly from Baba. And, uh, <clears throat> but here's, uh, <clears throat> oh, just to kind of give you a, a, an example, in the 69 Darshan, <clears throat> one of the Westerners was talking with this lady and they talked for quite a while on the veranda of the uh, Guru Prasad. <clears throat> and then uh, the Westerner said, uh, are you from England? I mean, from your accent, are you from England? She said, no, I'm from India. I'm Mani, uh, I'm Baba Mani, I'm Mani Baba's sister. <laughs> so they were, they, you know, you, <laughs> they didn't make anything big of themselves. <clears throat> they were just very unassuming. And like I say, like your favorite aunts and uncles. Now, this is something that Mani wrote. <clears throat> why, why were the saints saints? Because they were cheerful when it was difficult to be cheerful. Patient when it was difficult to be patient. And because they pushed when they wanted to stand still. And kept silent when they wanted to talk. And they were a group. And they were agreeable when they wanted to be disagreeable. That was all. It was quite simple and always will be. <clears throat> so it, it's, it, it, there's work. <laughs> they had to learn how to hold their tongue, how to control their emotions, or as I said in the new life, <clears throat> Baba said you had to be Lord and masters of your face your moods anyway so we're down to the last little bit of this book <clears throat> page 119 the divine treasure that's page 70 of the pdf the divine treasure the poet and perfect master rumi said on the spiritual path effort is required but grace is a thousand times greater than effort. When the sun rises, the candle of self-effort can be blown out. To love Meher Baba intensely is our effort, but essentially his gift. It involves full acceptance of the reality of his divine, but personal love for us. And this includes his divine grace. Meher Baba's divine love for us is intimately personal and continuous. It is divinely precious and unendingly sustaining. His love includes and reveals the treasure of divine grace, which is his gift to us. Baba's divine love grace is infinite. It cannot be measured. His love grace is not something that is given only briefly. It is eternal. His love grace easily supersedes the otherwise rigid laws of causation that ordinarily determine the state of our consciousness. Through the continuous and never diminished gift of his love grace, we are liberated from Maya's bindings and made aware of our own completeness. To be enabled through beloved Baba's loving grace, to recognize our own completeness, even now, is to be liberated instantaneously from addiction to any sense of lack, need, or want. In completeness, nothing can be added. It is the nature of our soul to be complete. The attributes of realizing this are a sense of blissful release and abiding fulfillment in the sweet reality of Meher Baba's freely and continuously given divine love grace. Um, I had, it, it, this is so perfect because um, this week I had one of these situations where I went to my door and a paper had been taped to it and I looked at it and I immediately became enraged. I was just in this incredible rage. And later I was so, you know, I kind of stomped out of my apartment and, 
And then I came back to my apartment and, you know, after a while I calmed down. But meanwhile, I just had realized, you know, I was overtaken by this feeling that was just, ah. and um, so this week, uh, you know, I, it happened. I found a little um, something in, in one of my emails and I went and I clicked on it and I got this, uh, insight from a little talk that somebody gave that said, you know, um, it, this was from some, a Buddhist background. It was uh, um, that the, um, the disturbing visitors they're um, may come to your door. And I thought, yeah, that's what happened. A disturbing visitor came to my door, <laughs> but you are not that visitor. It's like, invite them in for tea. And when Jeff was talking about the mandali, <laughs> you know, being just natural and sort of like aunts and uncles, I just thought that's just perfect. It's just, it's exactly that. All these moods that I go through, you know, they are these disturbing visitors that just come along and I just have to, you know, the minute I think about inviting them in for tea, I, you know, I become more compassionate with myself, you know? It's like, okay, you're <clears throat> feeling like a little kid, come on in, <laughs> you know? Sit down, have some tea, you know, so. Beautiful. Yeah. Does anybody have that poem handy <clears throat> called The Guest House from I Ruby? Do. You have it right there? <clears throat> um, yeah, just give me a second to get over to my music stand. I have it right here somewhere. The, the, Re Becky, you'll, you'll recognize this. This is from <laughs> Rumi and... <clears throat> Almost. And sometimes it's posted That's at amazing. the guest house on the center. <laughs> oh, here it is. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new... Uh -huh, my light's not on. Uh, every morning, a new arrival could be joy, a depression, a meanness. They come in as unexpected guests. Welcome them, invite them all in, even a crowd of sorrow. They yes. violently sweep your house clear of its furniture. Invite each guest Honorably, they may be clearing you out for a new delight. The dark thought, shame, malice, greet them at the door laughing. Invite them in. For you never, uh, for uh, they come as a guide from beyond. Sorry, I skipped a few words. Yeah. <clears throat> They come to you as a guide from beyond. <laughs> but I like that, you know, this being human is a guest house. And you don't, you can't kind of vet that who's coming, who's going to show up in your life. <clears throat> okay, any, anything else? It's from uh, uh, Coleman Barks, is, uh, his book of translations, you yeah. know. <clears throat> yeah, you can just Google it online. You'll find it. If you put in the guest house roomy, it'll pop right up. I, I have something I'd like to read. I want to res, uh, respond to the phrase love hyphen grace. Because in all uh, of my understanding and my receiving love and receiving grace, I haven't really put it all together as love grace, that love was the grace. For some reason there was love and then there was grace. And this uh, is a quote uh, from Baba. I don't know where it's from. It came from Wayne to me and I know I've heard it before. Every moment I respond to the whole of creation. Being divine, it is holy from love. Yeah. And to me, when the visitors show up, I mean, in, in my beingness, if I can remember this, 
I don't buy vitamin D tea necessarily, but I realize it's a response from love would be the, the best response. So I'm, I'm just offering that because this, this really hit me reading this right now. And, and I thought, wow, this is now I'm getting it. It's like pieces are falling in, in internally in me and, um, the understanding and the awakening is, is again, deeper. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Jay Baba. Yeah. Thank you, Patty. <clears throat> we just wonder what was posted on uh, Becky's door, but we won't, we won't, <laughs> we won't push her. <laughs> it might've been a poster, who knows, but we won't go there. <clears throat> All right. And Katie. <clears throat> Um, well, first of all, I wanted to say I love listening to you read, Shraddha. I was thinking how lovely it is to listen to you. And I was imagining myself like as your child, you reading me stories at night. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> your voice is so lovely. <laughs> but oh. what you were reading was so incredible. And really, that's my comment that like, to me, this passage is so it's like gorgeous and incredible and it's kind of mind blowing. And I feel like I could read it over and over again and still not quite like get it somehow, you know, like how to even like take it in. Like it almost seems like it's too much. <laughs> I can't. So um, that's really all I wanted to say. Like, it, I, how do you even begin to like take this in? I feel like I could read it over and over again. Um, it's just so beautiful, and um, and sort of pot potent. Yeah, and Bob, that's Baba's work. He's <clears throat> working on us to expand our real estate holdings. <laughs> Uh, taking off from what uh, Patty just said, I looked at the uh, again at the last two sentences of the first paragraph that Shraddha just read, and I'm going to read them. Uh, to love Mayor Baba intensely is our effort, but essentially his gift. It involves full acceptance of the reality of his divine but personal love for us. And this includes his divine grace. And it is interesting uh, what Patty said. You know, I, I think everybody, I think we all immediately associate Baba with love. I mean, that's just given. And then maybe we do have questions about where does the grace come in or how does it come in or what qualifies me to get it but <clears throat> it's already there it's just this the way darwin puts this this includes his divine grace it's it's all of a piece you can't separate it out and yet we for the sake of our journey and our processing and our uh work with one another we do uh focus on aspects and so on so Anyway, just uh, just that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> it, you know, I mean, Baba says, if you make the effort, it will draw his grace. <clears throat> and um, I thought of, uh, <clears throat> I, I've thought, often thought like two people who, who are in an un unresolvable conflict. <clears throat> And it goes on and on, uh, but they make this attempt to resolve it, <clears throat> but they really don't have the tools to do it. And it's, it's not going to happen. They don't have the tools. But if Baba is touched by their efforts, he can make, through his grace, he can make the impossible happen. You, you follow? It, it's, you make the effort and, <clears throat> and something that is really not that's futile becomes possible. That's the beautiful thing. <clears throat> uh, where he says, you know, grace uh, is above the law of cause and effect, of psychological cause and effect. Things that psychologically couldn't be done between the two parties, 
because Baba comes in there, it becomes possible. And I'm and it's fun for him to do it too. <laughs> Cindy? That was one of the things, Jeff, that I was gonna say that that grace being um his love grace easily supersedes the otherwise rigid laws of causation that ordinarily determine the state of our consciousness. Like that, that like what, however much I think I know about how the, everything works, which has gotta be just a scintilla of the whole big picture that with Baba, all, all things are crazy, great possible, no matter what. And to keep that faith with me but what I was feeling was in that last paragraph, I felt that the freedom of the completeness to be enabled through Baba's loving grace to recognize our own completeness, even now, is to be liberated instantaneously from addiction to any sense of lack, need, or want. In completeness, nothing can be added. It is the nature of our soul to be complete. I'll read the rest because it's so great again. The attributes of realizing this are a sense of blissful release and abiding fulfillment in the sweet reality of Meher Baba's freely and continuously given divine love grace. And in reading that, I felt the freedom of that. And then I felt some fear like creep in. Like if I'm, if I'm responsibilities, I won't put any effort in anymore. Like what will I do then? Like this sense of something I'm going to do something wrong um, if I'm feeling complete, like, like I'll be, be duped or gullible. Like, you know, this all happens in a split second. And then I was just feeling, but that effort then would come from inspiration, not fear. Like the natural acting comes from longing and from, you know, that the joy, the inspiration, the, fullness, like the Mondali said, the joy of doing all these things for Baba, not from the pressure, fear, I have to do this to be good. And that's how like breathing through this, I can rest even more in it, that whatever it is, the responsibility monster that's been in my brain or a lot of people's, you know, minds for eons, to be responsive to what is, is to be responsive to the natural state of the soul and then to serve from that place. And that feels hopeful for me, that feels joyful and extremely doable. Excellent, beautiful, well said, very touching. And Peter? Oh, hey everybody. I'm not sure, is it all right if I read a story from, uh, from The Real Treasure? I think it may be a good fit right now. In yeah, go ahead. All right. <clears throat> No, my me, I just woke up. Um, karma and grace is the name of it. It says, discussions about karma invariably lead to questions about whether one can alter one's karma. Once in, once in response to such a discussion, Balna too told the following story. Suppose a man goes to the bank where he has an account and asks the banker for a sum of rupees. 1500 minus, I'm not sure what that, what the reference is here. It says 1500 slash and a minus sign because he wants to go on pilgrimage and needs the money. The banker asks the man to wait as he needs to check the man's account. After checking, the banker says, sorry, but you can only withdraw rupees a thousand from your account because that is all that you have. Interesting how I just happen to be waking up now. Um, karma is like that. You only get what is due to you, which is decided by your actions, whether good or bad, which get recorded in your account as your sanskaras. You can call it destiny. Now, if the banker's son was to approach him with the same request, asking for 1,500 rupees, you go on a pilgrim to go on a pilgrimage, the banker's response would be different. He would ask his son to take at least 2000 rupees and even then would express concern that it might not be sufficient for the journey. 
father's grace is like the banker's love for his son. He would not insist on checking his son's account. Out of love for his son, he would want to help. Baba's grace is like that. You have your karma following you from the past, but his grace supersedes karma. In order to invite his grace, one has to remember him constantly and call out to him. Bal chuckled and added, we are like the foolish son who tells his banker father, dad, I can't take that 2000 from you because I have only saved 1500 rupees in my account. The son could not understand his father's love and concern. In the same way, if we insist on going through our karma instead of accepting Baba's loving grace, Baba says, all right, if you want what's due to you by way of karma, it's okay. I wanted to give you more by way of grace, but since you want karma, it's okay. This reminds me of how Bao would often laugh as he quoted the following. Oh Lord, I, okay. It's in another language. I Should I try to translate the language or no? I don't know if I can even. No, okay. don't try to try, just read the, the English translation. <laughs> if not now, then later we will become God intoxicated sometime or another. All right, that's the end of the story. I'm just wondering if anyone can add where we may be at and whether we are still in our karma or in his grace. That's a tough question to answer, but I'll put it out there if anyone has a response or Jeff maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a stab at this because... Uh, I've been really curious about this and, you know, all of us have had experiences, whether we're conscious of it or not, or even have the framework of this book where somehow we know Baba kind of wiped out some junk in our life or consciousness. I mean, literally just wiped it away or gave us an opportunity to make a choice to have it wiped away. And I know I can't help but feel that Darwin wrote this book because uh, sometimes when I read um, other literature, like, um, you know, Larry would know, like religious science and stuff, it talks about uh, grace superseding karma all the time. And so, Peter, when you shared this, I was like, oh, this is this is from Baba. This is the, in the Baba world. Um, but day to day, I can't help but feel that Darwin was trying to express this, and he did in this paragraph, and then he experienced it. I don't know, Jeff, if you know, but it's got to be that he kind of lived his life that way and, and was kind of encouraging everybody to think, not to think small, so that we would be open to receiving his grace. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Yeah, beautiful. If we if we think we're yeah. infinite, which we are, then we're more open to, to receiving yeah. his grace. And you know, I have a story to tell. You know, I've been caregiving my sister. I talked about her before. And I never really thought that there would be good communication between us. And uh, it was getting better and better. And I was, I was just waiting for the glitch. So... I had a phone call from her and she said, I have to ask you a favor. And every time she used to say that in the past, I would cringe like, oh God, what do you want? You know, like, what do you want? It was always something too much. And this is what she asked me. And this is Grace, right in the moment. She said, do you have copies of the master's prayer and the prayer of repentance? And I went, yes, I have them. Would you like them? Yes. And then I said, I have copies of the American Artie and the Australian Artie too. And I know you like music. Would you like them too? Oh, yes, please. So I quickly copied them and I sent them to her and she called me and got them. And then she said, um, I've been calling her frequently. And I said, this is really, this is really great. She said to me, I love Baba, but I'd like to love him more through Jesus and St. Francis. I said, great. That's wonderful. And then she said, but when you call me at night, would you mind 
if we read the master's prayer, sure. the prayer of repentance together. Wow. I think, whoa. <clears throat> so 8, 8.30 every night. That's that's what we've been doing. Wow. And that's after it's, years, right? It's 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 after years. And it's also after, you know, a lot of mistrust because of a lot of her problems, um, a lot of her mental health problems, and even involved Bob in that, in the center years ago, um, you know, with a kitty rescue, and I had to get out of work, and this has been going on for like, you know, 50 years. Yeah. You know? um, and there's, there's been a love for Bob, but a resistance, I guess, yeah. and it's just, you know, opened up. Um, and I know it's Bob's grace, um, you know, and I, I've had other situations, you know, with, with people um, over the years that I feel the karma, you know, has been has been wiped out. Um, and Bob is, is, um, is doing that for us to feel his love and his grace constantly in every little situation. Um, and I think this group, um, in addition to the reading, but the group itself is, is like a grace group. The people in this group are, you know, just share so much that Bob's grace can come through all of us to each other too, not just directly from Bob. And it feels, it, it's, it just feels more powerful to me from this group, you know? Yeah, so beautiful, beautiful. You, you're saying these people are gracious, these people here? I mean, my God. <laughs> But did Dar talk about about that kind of thing about about a Baba Baba's gracious wiping out problems just to be with? Uh, say that again, Heidi. Did Darwin ever mention specifically how Baba's grace just supersedes karma in some way? Hmm. Huh. I mean, he was kind of like a a, a living embodiment of accepting yeah. Baba's grace. I mean, I felt I always felt like Darwin when he was talking, he had the confidence that Baba was just right behind him. I know. You know, it, Baba wasn't over there somewhere or up above. Baba was just kind of right there with him, and he just kept Baba right there, and. And I'm sure if you keep Baba right there in that way, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things unfold much more smoothly than when the uh, ego's in there, kind of uh, hitting off of stuff. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say to Heidi uh, that when you that when you um, told that just now, I just a huge. Uh, joy for you and your sister uh, welled up inside me and tears came to my heart and to me that is the grace that um this is a group like a family and that we have grown together and i've come never met you before heidi but you know you're a part of me now and how much joy that gave me and um i've been experiencing you know a lot of things people would call karma you know I broke my leg, then I broke my leg again. Then so it's all these different physical things. But I think that grace is something entirely, I mean, karma is entirely something entirely different, I think. And grace is something entirely different than I might have thought in the past. It's not just a physicalization. Grace is so internal. And sometimes having, you know, something obviously negative in our lives is the greatest grace we could possibly have and it is totally dependent on how close I feel to Baba and how much I um, experience him in my heart and in my daily life. Lovely. Lovely. So sweet. And Elizabeth? Yes, yeah, so <clears throat> I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs of outs of grace and karma but my understanding is that um grace is related is related to the whim and the wish of the beloved and there is this divine plan and there's karma 
and the um, you know each reaction causing each action causing a reaction and the building up of positive and negative sanskaras. But in the presence of the master, it has been said that he can take all that away in just a blink of an eye. That to me is grace, and so it is up to the. I th this is my personal belief, and I think it's in the discourses. I'd have to look for the passages, but it's the passages about uh, whim and will. And it's probably also repeated in God Speaks. Um, but that's my understanding about grace and how this grace is related to Baba's will. And I think that is directly, directly related to faith we have in the master. And in many traditions, it says it's faith that heals you. Like the man who got up and pulled up his bed and walked away. And Jesus said, it wasn't me. It was because of your faith. So I think the faith is related to the grace. And the grace is related to the whim and the will. I mean, the wish. Sorry. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. can transform everything. But I really only know what I know. So yeah. there are probably others who know a lot more. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no. I think Baba has a lot of fun making impossible things happen in our lives. Like hiding Easter eggs and watching your kids run and find them, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just wanted to thank Gabriella for bringing up that point about how sometimes you know, disasters or negative experiences could turn out to be such grace. And it reminded me what Patty was reading about how, I forgot the exact way she put it um, out of the reading with how Baba tends to all of creation and his response to creation is out of love. And it's, you know, and I really try to get that in my body feeling that of just realizing that everything happening in our lives is out of that love, the loss, the challenges, the, the positive things and all of that. And, and I know so much uh, I've seen in my own life that it doesn't feel like that at the time, you know, you're trying to keep things together. It's why me, why is this happening? And I know probably most of us have had the experience where a week, a month, sometimes years later, God reveals to you, oh my God, that's why that happened. Mm -hmm. And it washes over you and you're like, oh my God, I, I couldn't have planned that any better. And I, I feel like I've seen enough of that happen now where these negative, quote unquote, negative and disastrous things, you know, have years later been exposed to be these incredible acts of grace. And and I, I think what I'm, I'm trying to say is, is to have that be a permanent experience where you're aware of that all the time as the negative and the challenging is happening and that it's not a month or years later. Like, you know, you walk out and, you know, say with the coronavirus, I've, I've had a couple of losses related to that. And, you know, right when you lose the job, or right when this happens, you're like, oh, wow, look at that. That's incredible. What an act of of grace. I wonder what's going to come next. And you know that that's really what it is, but you know, so it's beautiful. I, I hope I get to that point soon where I can see it as that, as it's unfolding and there isn't that months and years lag time with the accompanying, <laughs> why did that happen? Oh, no, and all, all the suffering that comes with it. So <clears throat> yeah, thank you all for sharing. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a quote from prophet Muhammad three words, give God time. <laughs> yep. Heidi, I was just going to say, uh, uh, in my life, it's happened once or twice. It's, it's, you remind me of it, how you let somebody, you tell them about Baba, and then you get a little, you know, you want them to come to Baba, but you just got to let time and that person go through whatever they've got to go through with their experience in order to uh, come around to asking you about Baba and it's, but, but uh, 
I'm very happy to hear that, and I've said it's happened to me. That's my sharing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. <clears throat> and Janet. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm back to this whole grace thing. I just during the midst of this conversation and before, because and for people who came in late, we were discussing about the being big instead of small. And I had the experience, I came, remembered that just right before I started this Zoom, I had a conversation with someone in, in which I put myself kind of down a little bit. And this person kind of agreed with me. And I, and I, and I just was thinking about that and it was distracting me. And then I'm like, I'm just going to give that to Baba. And, and, and I realized that it was, my small self, not my big self, that was that made the statement to begin with, and that then took offense a bit at the other one. And so I gave, I, I just in the midst of this, I gave it to Baba, and I could feel the washing over me. Of, I mean, I'm not saying that that pattern is a hundred percent gone for me, but I could feel the washing over me of how I presented that to have that happen and 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 that really I can make I can with Baba's so it was a matter of effort to give it to Baba and then his grace to give me the the internal uh, experience the the body felt experience of 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 that that is that's that that I, that, that I am truly something else yeah beautiful janet there you have that i like the way you say you felt it bodily the yes <clears throat> yes and so it was it was this story effort and grace <laughs> i made the i mean the effort came to give to baba and the grace was right there immediately yeah wonderful so thank you all <laughs> yeah <clears throat> beautiful and Stuart. Yeah, some wonderful contributions here. Um, so I'm just reminded of kind of an unexpected little story for me. Uh, years ago, I was sitting in the Samadhi alone, nobody else in there, sitting with Baba, and I was kind of complaining about my mother, <laughs> who, who was the, the most challenging person for me in my life. And she truly drove me to God's feet when I was a teenager. And uh, sitting with Bob and I said, well, you know, my mother, she, she drove me to God. And Baba internally said to me, stop, listen to that. She gave you the greatest gift she could have given you. She drove you to me. And I, I was just not backwards. It was a perspective I never dreamt of, and, and not only did it expand me in my life and with her, and, and I, I decided simply to treat her the best I could the rest of her life, which I did. Um, Beautiful. Through effort, grace. <laughs> but, um, but it expanded my perspective on life in general. And, you know, these seemingly maybe great challenges that are actually incredible grace behind everything. Beautiful story, Stu. Very touching. <clears throat> so many lovely stories like this because of Bob. And Laurice. J. Bob, everyone. Yeah, J. Bob. So about five weeks ago, we decided that we live in Durham, North Carolina, that we would rent an Airbnb in North Myrtle Beach because we haven't been to Myrtle Beach in over a year or almost a year. I think it was last Thanksgiving. And we just wanted to walk on Baba's Beach. And so we, bu we booked it. And then 
they said that they opened the center for day walks. And um, so, but last night we, we uh, yesterday we drove in and we went after, we got, after dark, we went on the beach and we walked and we walked and we walked. And then it was like, okay, that must be Briarcliff. And we walked and we walked. I can't tell you the desire, the, the excitement, like that must be the center. You know, I, it was really tough because it was nice walking while we were near the condos. And then there was all these ups and downs and inland lakes. And so even getting there to find Baba's Beach was difficult. And, um, and I'm not sure that we totally got there, but we could see it. And we were, I mean, the, the thrill of, of just being near Baba's Beach was, uh, was uh, so, my heart was so full. Then today we went to the center and went for a walk. And, you know, you can't, you can't go under any awnings and you can't go in any, any buildings, but the bench outside of the lagoon cabin is not under the awning. So I stood up on the bench and I could see Baba's chair and I could see the flowers there. And, um, and to have a perspective going to there and going to the outside the different buildings, we walked over to Baba's house and of course it's not open, but through the tiny little cracks in the, in the, in the wall around it, the, you know, the wooden thing, I could just see, I could just see the, the porch. And it reminded me of how Mara used to look out through tiny little cracks when Baba was giving a big, you know, darshan and how exciting that was for them. And it's like, it was so thrilling just to be able to look through those cracks and just see Baba's porch and his house. And then to go over outside Dilruba and stand way outside of it. And to have the perspective of like, I've never not gone into things, you know what I mean? Like, a, and the memory of all the people we'd go to tea with and, um, but my heart was so full. The desire was so strong to be there. And to, to and the thrill of being on walking on Baba's center again, and um, and then the thought like, you know, there's supposed to be a superstructure over the samadhi. Has the has did I not know that the time has come and gone for for being in the samadhi like ever forever? Like, did I do I not know how lucky I was? And Terry said to me, "Did you ever see Bao in in the um, in the bar?" And I said, "Yes." You know, like I didn't see a lot of Mandali, but but just to be so grateful for every little time that I had um, with people at the center, and you know, like uh, just my heart is so full. Um, so, say Baba. Wow, that's a great pitch for coming back on the center, folks. <laughs> you yeah. captured it beautifully. How sweet. So I listen. Um, so I recently had a really amazing experience of love grace. I have been struggling mightily. I've been in the program of study. It's uh, for two years. And um, I'm usually a very good student. I've been struggling mightily and feeling inferior, comparing myself to others, questioning myself. And it's been overwhelming, actually. And, you know, I just gave it to Baba. Baba asked. Baba said, bring it all to me. <laughs> so I'm bring, I, I brought it to Baba you know, every morning, every night, throughout the day. And did that increasingly because it was so difficult for me, 24 hours a day, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> I, I, I was always troubled. And I woke up yesterday and it was lifted. It's, it's the same program, the same requirements. And I feel 
like a sponge taking it in, like I like I'm I'm filling with light. The more the more I study, the more I read, I'm filling with light. Before it felt effort, 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 and now it feels grace. And I am grateful. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Beautiful, <laughs> Betty. <clears throat> yeah, the giving to Baba, which was, you know, so much of <clears throat> of Darwin's approach to Baba, give him those things. And you really, Baba really receives these things. These are like roses to him, and they may be like <clears throat> uh, <laughs> faded flowers from us. It means the world to him. Yes. <clears throat> The supremacy of love. Mayor Baba used to say to us, you belong to me. We all belong to him. He is our friend, no matter what. He's offering us the kingdom of heaven on a silver platter. Gold and silver are mere grains of sand compared to what he wants to share with us. So look for beloved Baba in your hearts in the heart and focus on him instead of on desires and all the lesser things. The love of God can supersede the flow of desires and change our focus to the flow of love in the heart. This puts us in a different realm, a realm of transcend transcendent consciousness. The ego begins to diminish, the eyes of the heart open, and the heart becomes more and more pure. It is like the beginning of dawn. It is our spiritual awakening. J. Mayor Baba. Wow. wow. Yeah. And that, uh, that the, uh, eventually the eye of the heart does open. There is such thing as the eye of the heart. And as you create more space within that, that inner vision starts to open up so you can, you can see uh, what's going on in there and, and not just be a victim. You don't just pick, a, pick up a ride with, you know, the first car going by. <laughs> Might be a, you know, a, a drug run from Mexico into the <laughs> state. You, you choose where you, where you want your, your heart to go. <clears throat> he didn't go into that uh, opening of the eye of the heart too much in this book, but it, it, it's a phenomenon. It's a particular phenomenon. It's, like, it's really the consciousness is able to <clears throat> not have to look through the, the narrow lens of the mind or thought, and it doesn't have to look through the the distorting lens of emotions and desires and feelings, uh, it, not looking out through that, it's, it's behind that. You can kind of see, it's a sight, it's a, it's a visual seeing, but it all is more than that. And it just makes, uh, it makes traveling, uh, through this world a lot easier. Um, I mean, there I, did I ever mention the, the difference? God, I can't even remember. Difference between intuition and illumination, <clears throat> like last week or something. But th this is, I'll just kind of give you it. This is how gradual it is. But say somebody is going, uh, proceeding on a moonless, moonless night across a countryside. <clears throat> and they're kind of fumbling their way along, and then there's a flash of lightning, and that illumines the, the distance for a certain uh, way, and then they're struggling again, another flash of light, and they can proceed a little bit further, and another flash of light. When those flashes of light reach such a frequency where you can start to, to begin to see the countryside <clears throat> in glimpses, even though it's erratic, you see the countryside and you can proceed safely. That's when intuition is starting to merge into illumination. <clears throat> and, 
And that's the same with love, starting in a small way and then it gets larger until it reaches the ocean. <clears throat> so the intuition starts to light up and become a little more illumined. Uh, Andre? Um, <clears throat> would you say that um, when we make space by trying to give our our uh, our uh, four foibles, our um, our failures to Baba, um, is that making space uh, for the eye of the heart to to function? Is is that more or less uh, some some of the way to look at this? Yeah. And even better than that, it makes room for Baba to live in you. <clears throat> I mean, I think of it as like a warehouse. And the more you empty the, the all the boxes and crates and everything in the warehouse, the more Baba can walk around and live in you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that giving to Baba was a major thing that I gathered from Darwin what uh early on back in the early 70s he that was one of the main things yeah i uh, i would agree that since you brought that up when i first started coming to these to these meetings uh it's 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 made a deep and deep deep impression on 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 me i think it's that's like you say you've been a pivot in my life now i can remember okay. that yeah yes. well that yeah, that came right from Darwin and, and Bob, of course. But he, one day he said, even the good takes up space. Love, love displaces nothing. Love doesn't take up space, but even good. So you have to even unload good from your warehouse. Uh, <laughs> besides the, the, the selfishness, you know, the, the, the good as well. And if I could just, uh, can, can I just uh, uh, add to that? You know, yeah. I, had a, I had a little problem with unloading the good because if I've written a song or I've done an arrangement, I've done a recording, it's come out good. And I said, oh, it's so good. And then I got, oh, here we go, Bob. This is for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, to, to give up the stuff that I'm proud of yeah. is, is so difficult. And I just, you know, I have to just you know, have a quiet moment and say, no, this too, because I'm afraid that they don't take everything away that gives me pleasure like that. And because I'm saying this is for you, actually, he did that once to me. Um, years ago, when I first came to Bobby he says, I'll give you all my music and everything. And then for 10 years, whoop, it was gone, you know, all of that inspiration and it's come, come back. So, I would do it again, you know, to get closer to him. But it's just when I have to give him the good, uh, those things that I like about myself, let's say, uh, I'm the, that's that's the more difficult part. It's easy to give him the stuff I don't like. Please take this. I'm sorry I did that. I'm ashamed of that. Look, do you, do you remember this, Baba? For you. But to give him the good stuff, uh, I, I don't like that. <laughs> Thank but, but you. He, gives you, he gives you love in exchange, even if it's not, uh, even if it's, hard to discern. You're getting love in exchange, always. Good yeah. point. Good point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, somewhere that I don't remember, I read that Baba said, love is a reflection of unity and diversity. Yeah. And, you know, to me, the effort part is to be in love, that eye of the heart. And when I can do that, then I can begin to sense more of that, of that unity. And that love strikes me as it's like a revolving door. So, you know, here I am, I'm looking through love toward unity, but I would add something Baba didn't say. And to me, that is that grace is the projection of unity in diversity through love. Beautiful, yeah. So when the door revolves, you know, the light that comes from 
in your eye, behind your eye, is shining everywhere. When we see it from diversity, love reflects unity. But then when the revolving door turns, what's behind our eyes is unity. And that is the grace to see the unity and diversity through love. Yeah, beautiful. Well said, Ken. Beautiful. These, you people speak so beautifully about your experiences with Baba, truly. Yeah, so beautiful. And Robin. Uh, Jeff, can you talk a little more about um, intuition and illumination and maybe describe how you relate to that a little more? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. That, that's a large, that, <laughs> that's kind of a large subject, but I think it's good in, in the developing of intuition is to hold yourself accountable when you thought something, say a, a situation was going to turn out to be terrible and it turned out to be good. That means that, that you didn't have, that wasn't an intuition operating. And you have to kind of hold your mind account uh, uh, to account for having projected a false uh, future on something. I mean, it it's a big subject, but it's, you know, say you see somebody, you think that they're uh, dishonest. And you discover later on from actual fact that they were, were honest. So that means that that the mind projected this onto somebody. And so you, you, a lot of people just blow it off, but I kind of gathered that you, you say, mind, I can't believe you. You just told me that that person was dishonest and they were honest. But then you may see somebody and you think they are honest and it turns out they are honest. And so that you, then you can congratulate your intuition for having seen. And I do this throughout the day, you know, uh, uh, for years, you know, if and see what uh, what I think about a situation. And if it if it's, turns out differently from what I thought, then that was my mind in there projecting and not my intuition. In, Baba says intuition is always 100 percent correct. Accessing it is the great challenge. Uh, and a lot of what seems like intuitions are really impulses. And they, they flash with the same certainty as an intuition. So it's a whole internal kind of subtle realm to, to separate these things out. But that maybe we can, um, you know, maybe sometime we can uh, stop the camera on that particular thing. <clears throat> So, but are you saying that the illumination part is coming to know whether it was really intuition or not? Or is there no, some no, other this, level of... No, this is just building up a greater frequency for in, uh, flashes of intuition. But when they begin to have a, a greater and greater frequency and you can go through your life and, you, and you're pretty accurate in your assessment of things that happen in life, then you're moving closer into uh, an ongoing intuition. And eventually, uh, supposedly, it's supposed to, uh, uh, the light is supposed to come in. But anyway, we should talk, well, that, maybe this will come up if, if we decide to go through this book again, because Darwin does touch on that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But, or, or I'll see you private, you know, we'll, we'll talk or something over the phone. Yeah. And Rosalie? Yeah. Uh, there's um, some words of Baba that he speaks of heart see free. So here it is. Let the world see the dual show of destruction 
as the mercy game in realization of truth. Let the head be calm and the heart see free. Life is good as it is. Life is real as it is. Life is my work of realization. Yeah, and that's Baba through Narina. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, I wanted to mention here that um, Stu will, anybody wants to stay on sometime after seven for a heart-centered meditation. Uh, and it's well worth the experience. And uh, I'm just saying that now. Okay. I just want to, um, sometimes it's really hard for me to believe that this intimate experience with each other gets to happen. It's so rich and so close without with being so far away physically from each other. It's really an amazing experience. And the stuff you that you said about um, like when you feel it inside of you and you know it's real, it's not, it's not something you even think about, but it's not impulse. The difference between those two is yeah. really intuition and impulse really when you get to that place that you can, I mean, you're not, I don't know that I'm not consistently in that place, but when I can be in that place and when I'm with Bubba and it's all feeling simpatico, it's really the way it is. And it's amazing to have words behind what I had in my brain. So thank you. Yeah, beautiful. You know, there, there were two things that Baba said <clears throat> that I found very beautiful and it kind of speaks to what you said. Baba back in the thirties said, all differences between one another are merely superficial mm -hmm. and cannot affect the love we feel for each other deep down. We already love each other that, you know, so it's a matter of clearing the debris that makes it seem otherwise. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, we have this to draw upon. I mean, and we have this love for each other. And if we don't take our little melodrama too seriously, we can enjoy <laughs> that. The other thing that Baba said on the, his last message in 1954 on the alphabet board, Baba said that we would be held together by internal links, mm -hmm. not just the link with him, but with each other. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the people you're seeing on the screen, this part of your support system for the next 700 years, I'd get, to, I'd get to know them well. <laughs> no, I mean, so we, we'll be helping each other in so many ways over the next centuries. This isn't the first time we've uh, been together. Not our first ro rodeo? Yeah, this is not the first rodeo. And, and in many ways, we, we help each other out. Uh, and many people have gotten, found out about Baba through... <clears throat> through people here on the screen, you know? I think the richness and authenticity is something that's very incredible in this group. I just... And by the way, this is Terry and, and Diane. Diane. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Zion right now, but we live in LA, in Venice. But Zion is pretty amazing, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, we read this in the, uh, you know, before 530, uh, but <clears throat> there were uh, two people that met Baba back in 1931. Uh, this poem is written by one of their daughters. And uh, this is uh, Kenneth Ross met Baba in 1931. And you see him playing the bagpipes <clears throat> for Baba when he was, went out to East Chalicum. And and later on, through Baba, he married Josephine. Uh, I don't know if it was, uh, uh, I forgot her maiden name. <clears throat> but she met Baba in 1931 at Harmon on Hudson. And she wrote some beautiful poems. Uh, but anyway, this is her daughter. There were three of them, Anne and Mar Margarita and, um, and Rosie. Now, I don't know, is Anne still here? 
This is one of the sisters. Up. Oh. Yes, she is. Is she there? Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and so Rosie met Baba in, I believe, uh, she met Baba in 1956 in New York. And I think it was at the Delmonica Hotel. She was seven years old. <clears throat> and she went over uh, to Baba. And this is her experience viewed from, from years later, looking back. So she says, uh, Meeting Baba by Rosie Richards. I was seven. Do I remember? Oh, yes. All time ceased. I walked into a great circle of light and complete protection. No one, no thing, no sound, only the essence and the voice of the silent one. How could that be? What did he say? Where was I? Enclosed in light where no harm could penetrate, no harm. I was lifted up. The circle was beyond where I could sense. Great love light blinded me with the enormity of this happening. I was seven. Do I now understand how incredible this event on, eternity, on eternity's clock was? Have, I, have problems vanished? No. Have challenges eluded me? No. Do I cry? Yes. Tears of joy, fear, love, hope for the less sensitive humanity. Have I been hurt? Yes, deeply by many people. Am I vulnerable? Oh yes, vulnerable to the pain my physically and mentally fragile family have endured. Vulnerable to the horror of man harming man and to anger and unkindness in our world. Why have I been so blessed? I have this knowing, I have love. I am so small, he is so great. What can I give? The only gift worth sharing, that in all the turmoil, misunderstandings, confusions, mistakes, wars, tumult, there is hope, there is love. How can I be so brazen? I have a responsibility because I glimpsed God, the Lord may hear, he is real. I sat on the lap of God. Beautifully, you know, just a beautiful thing. <clears throat> yeah, that's a whole, uh, her whole life with Baba, looking back on that moment when she was seven years old on Baba's lap. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, there's Anne right there. Were you there when I read that, Anne? Oh, good. That's one of the sisters right there. She met Baba also. Was, was, did she meet her? It was in the Delmonico Hotel? Um, you, you were a little confused on uh, when Rosie met Baba. She met him in 1952. Oh, 52, okay at Mrs. Deuce's apartment and and then at the Delmonica was uh, mother and Marguerite and myself. Rosie, Rosie wasn't there at the Delmonica. Oh, so 52. Was you were right. Look, I knew that you were there uh, with Bob in 56. That's beautiful. Dance for joy in the meaningless array for all is void in the sight of God. Cease thy struggles with the coils of illusion. Let it go on unchallenged, unclaimed, and smile with God. For all is a trick, a joke which never was. Be not deceived by the enchantment of a distant freedom 
Oh, yay, who were never bound, laugh at the trammels of Maya. Oh, I apologize. It actually is, oh, ye who were never bound. <laughs> laugh at the trammels of Maya. Moment of silence and... Jay Baba. <clears throat> Any questions come up at all? There's a comment I wanted to make, and, I'm, and I hope Cindy won't be upset with me piggybacking on what she just said. But in light of what's happening in a world which I have little clue to, um, to consider that it's an act of service to continue on with Ever and Grace, that the energy put out, um, I trust, expands or continues out with power. And in light of what's happening in the world, I think um, not only do we personally benefit from going through at, um, effort and grace with, with Jeff and Angela, and I'm sorry, I forget the other lady's name, but, I, but I'm, I'm confident and want to even see more and more that it's an active service right now in the turmoil of the world. I think it's um, whatever direction the world is supposed to go in, I think by doing this work will help propel that um, where Baba wants it to go. Good. I, I, I sure hope. I pray to Baba that, and I, I feel like our attention on him uh, allows him to give special attention to the world. Yeah. You know, the, there's a, in the discourse, as I've mentioned this before, Baba says, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that but that the master <clears throat> receives our song at the local level, spiritualizes it and broadcasts it to the world at large. So that's a powerful dynamic for creating a positive change in the world. Well, I wanted to mention too, uh, I mean, I have, but in a little bit that Stu will lead us in a, heart-centered meditation, uh, but any, um, anyone to share something? Jeff, yeah. uh, I have a, <clears throat> just a question for you. I, I posted it in the chat, but I, I don't know that anybody's going to respond to it there. But since Anne corrected us uh, so that Rosie was not there, and 56, did her poem not start out with saying she was seven years old when she met Baba? And that wouldn't uh, quite work out with meeting Baba in 52. I'm just wondering. Well, she must have been born in 45, probably. Okay. okay. What, what, and when was Rosie born? <laughs> You can unmute. Uh, you can. 1945, you're right about that. Yeah. So it was the meeting was actually in 52. <clears throat> the whole family met him in 1952. Uh, three of us for the first time, and mother and daddy had, you know, hadn't seen him since the 30s. Great. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Good that she was here because I've been uh, telling that wrong. <laughs> okay. Because you can see them in the, the, the film of the Delmonico Hell uh, gathering. You can see some of the, of the family. So oh. I assumed that, that Rosie was there. Ah. Jeff, I really appreciated your um, speaking about intuition today also. And, and of how you kind of check it through the day to see how close you are to an intuitive side or how, how much of yourself is involved, your mind, as you said. I really appreciate that. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. might already, but I just don't know it. 
Yeah, and like I say, life life will uh, will give you the feedback in the sense that if you <clears throat> you thought that the, going to this party was going to be a disaster, and you went there and you had a great time, you know what? You know, then you were projecting your you know your son's scars over on that thing, and it wasn't your intuition. I mean, I I hold myself accountable for these things, not not in a way that I beat myself up about it is I make note, you know, Jeff, you missed that cue. Yeah. Larry, go ahead and jump in anytime you're ready. Uh, Jeff, I just wanted to mention, um, does Catherine O'Brien still have copies of the book? Mm -hmm. Because I have her email address. I could put that in the chat if you wanted it. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I, she sent me a bunch of the books. And okay. when, uh, and when I run out of them, then uh, then we can give her name. Okay. Yeah. But meanwhile, uh, this way uh, I'll just I'll go through go through all the books. I'll keep it in my file. Yeah. Good. Any uh, anything else come up? You know, I guess it's just astounding to me that we're so quiet about the grace because it seems like I just seem to get so much of it through my day. Uh, just in relation to this book talking about at the beginning when he talked about how the train comes out of the station in the morning when you wake up first thing you're down the track, but if you can just slow it down and be with Baba for a little bit. That to me is the beginning of grace in my day. Yeah. Because he responds. I, my effort can bring a response that will take me from where I wake up to a place that is so much closer to Baba than myself, my little yeah. self. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing. <laughs> we can't say a thing about grace, you know, but yet it just seems to be shot through our days and our lives. Yeah, here's, here's what Baba says about grace. <clears throat> it is the creation of the utterly new, a descent of truth into the false. Hence, its creativity is infinite. The, re the redeeming act of a perfect master is the, a flash of the eternal in the midst of what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. This is the mystery of divine grace bestowed by the perfect master. But I like that, a flash of the eternal in the midst of what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. Jeff, where is that from? What, where is that quote? It's, it's from- um, it's Life at its best. Life at its best. Yes, I know that. I, that's my favorite quote, I think. And sometime I'll tell Would you. you read that uh, one more time, Jeff? Uh, read that again. That would be awesome. <clears throat> About grace. It is a creation of the utterly new, a descent of the truth into the false. Hence, its creativity is infinite. The redeeming act of a perfect master or the avatar is a flash of the eternal in the midst of what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. This is the mystery of divine grace bestowed by the perfect master. <clears throat> wow, what page is 22. that? Again? Huh? What page and book is that again? Pa page 22 on uh, Life at Its Best. <clears throat> but I'll tell you, uh, uh, a story, I mean, not, I won't do it now, but ask me maybe next week, a story of grace in, in the case of Dr. Kenmore, Dr. Harry Kenmore, one of Baba's Mondali, and <clears throat> it's a different grace than, grace is, this is one type of grace, and you will be surprised. <clears throat> It doesn't always take uh, um, 
a loving, what we would call a loving form. I mean, I think different ones have mentioned that some of the terrible things that happened to them were the things that, well, like Stu said about his mother, you know, <clears throat> these things drove some of these uh, negative situations drive us to Baba and to deeper, deeper states of love. So it isn't always just nice, warm and cozy. <laughs> Jeff, could you go ahead and share the Dr. Kenmore story? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, um, I had a, a wonderful association with him that <clears throat> some uh, Baba arranged, but here's what happened. <clears throat> Dr. Uh, Kenmore, he grew up in New York. He was very popular. Uh, he was into music and stage and acting and all of that. Uh, larger than life personality <clears throat> and then suddenly at age 16 he wound up being blind he woke up blind he couldn't see <clears throat> and his parents hadn't get, forewarned him for it he uh and he he, he was upset with them they, he, they didn't give him any forewarning on it and his parents <clears throat> back then one of the things that blind people did is you get a cart and you sell rags in Manhattan on the streets of Manhattan. They told him, why don't you go sell rags now? <clears throat> yeah, he was very popular and everything. And now he has <clears throat> lost everything. <clears throat> and he was so upset with his parents that he just left them. And he started hopping uh, freight on freight trains and he got involved with circuses. And he even said at one point he was able to hypnotize people by uh, the different intonations of his voice. He, he discovered a lot of these different things. <clears throat> and so he, he spent some years uh, in the circus, but at a certain point he decided <clears throat> to, that he wanted to settle down. And he came back to New York and he had a, a, an old buddy of his who was studying chiropractic. And so he, he became a chiropractor. And, but, he was always resentful of his blindness, very, very upset with his blindness. Why did this happen to him? <clears throat> and so then, uh, so he became a chiropractor, but he also became a, a healer. <clears throat> and he was quite successful <clears throat> uh, in healing. But at a certain point, I mean, and I, I got this right from him, <clears throat> he, he uh, decided to meditate. And so he meditated for 10 years and for Harry to meditate for 10 years is like a thousand thousand years for most people because he was so intense but in one of his meditations as he was meditating in his office suddenly he could see he saw the office you could see the surroundings because he he his inner eye opened which wasn't handicapped by his physical blindness so in certain states of heightened meditation he was able to see uh, and uh, then another thing is uh, at a certain point he got into his past lives he was able to actually see his uh, past lives and see how they unfolded and looking at his past lives he was outraged because there was no reason for him to have been blind he could tell he 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 had a great inner knowing and he could tell that he was not destined to be blind that was he was even more infuriated you know why did i become blind and then uh, because he was such a good chiropractor somehow it was either margaret krask or adele walken uh started going to see him and they told him about baba and so he be you know he uh was immediately drawn to baba and you know I think, I don't know whether he met Baba in 56 in New York, but he, uh, for sure he met Baba in, at the center in 19, you know, 1956. And, and when he went in to see Baba after the, you know, usual kind of pleasantries and everything, he said to Baba, Baba, why did I become blind? And Baba said, I created your blindness. You were destined to become a world-renowned surgeon. 
but you wouldn't have had time for me. And that's the first time in all of his life that he accepted his blindness. And because if he had been a world renowned surgeon, he would have been in the beck and call of, of all the world, the wealthy and the royalty of the world. And as a result of being a chiropractor, he could give, let, leave his practice with his partner and he was able to go see Baba for months on end sometimes. And I think that, that after the 56 accident, when Baba, they said Baba would never be able to walk again, I might, I might not, this may not be true, but I think he was the one that helped Baba to be able to walk again <clears throat> through his chiropractic work. But he got to see Baba many, many times, and <clears throat> Baba called him one of his mandali, one of his intimate mandali. So th what I mean there is that it's the creation, it's, what was that, the creation of the utterly new, a descent of the truth in what is otherwise rigidly determined causation. He was destined, he, he was not destined to be blind, but grace came in and gave him blindness, but that enabled him to have all that time with Baba himself. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, um, so <clears throat> there is a, an instance of grace that doesn't appear on the surface to be <clears throat> a good thing, but it enabled him to have a lot of intimate time with Baba. Yeah. If it also, makes I, sense. So Larice says that Harry helped Baba walk again. Yeah, Jeff, there, yeah. there's, there, Marijuana's book has some just beautiful sections on about Harry. Yeah. Uh, so just referring people to that. Yeah. yeah. And there's a book called Harry, which is. <clears throat> right, of course. <clears throat> so that's, so uh, a flash of the eternal in, in what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. And, and like I say, he had his, he had his, past life spread out on the table and he should not have been blind. Wow. So it, it probably doesn't need to be said, but it wasn't just all the time with Baba, but the incredible closeness with Baba and his and his inner link with him. Oh yeah. Baba called him one of his intimate mandali and he's buried there at Lower Maribad. Yeah, I mean he was touching he was touching Baba. You know, he was one of the only people, I mean, people could massage Baba, but he had, you know, t you know, he's manipulating him and, and working oh, on yeah. him and, and talked about how beautiful and sensitive his skin and his body was. Yeah. And he had such accelerated touch because of being blind. And, you know, all of his, his other senses were, you know, so can you imagine having heightened touch, yeah. being a healer and then being able to work to touch the body yeah. of the avatar. He could even give uh, adjustments, remote control. From Someone could stand at a distance and click, 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 and their <clears throat> vertebrae would go into place. I, I'm, <laughs> but he had a great deal of, of powers that he had uh, acquired before Baba. But then he said, you know, he told me he, that Baba put, put a curtain around him. And his whole job was to remember Baba, and Baba wouldn't allow him any of the healing things that he did of casting out spirits from people. Or He did a lot of different things before Baba. But Baba kind of simplified everything. So, hey, uh, do you folks want to do uh, any other questions or anything else? Jeff, I'm just thinking of another quick grace story, unexpected. Yeah. Um, somewhere around 2000, I was in India with my daughter, and Eric Nadell was keeping a special eye on us, and he was he would suddenly appear and just say, "Oh, come with me. We're going to do this together." It it kept happening, and one day he said, "Come on, let's go do something," and he led us with him to Muhammad the Must. And 
he didn't even, I don't remember that Erico even said anything, but it became clear we were going to help bathe Muhammad, help him bathe Muhammad. And I remember the incredible quality of his skin, this translucent, uh, soft quality. And, you know, and my daughter looked at me like, oh, my God, are we actually doing this? And, you know, it was a remarkable experience. She finished college and moved away from home. And several months later, she called us up and out of the blue, she said, I want to go to massage school. I want to become a massage therapist. And we said, where, where did that come from? And she said, I'm, I'm not quite sure. You know, I've thought about it. I have an interest. And because she had studied anthropology and Spanish. It hit me several years later that I felt quite sure that that time with Muhammad and my daughter's hands on him had led her to become a massage therapist. And 18 years later, she and her husband have this massage business in Boston together. Beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> well, shall we go for um, this this heart centered meditation? And it's it's short, but it's very it gets very full uh, and brings in Baba's love so powerfully. So, yeah. So, Stu, yeah. over to you. I have to unmute. Um, and if everybody else could be muted, that would be wonderful. And Jay Baba. So just close your eyes and settle back into wherever you're sitting or laying. Just let yourself sink in. And we'll let the world drift away even more as we go through this. And start to take some good, slow, deep breaths into your belly. A gentle, deep belly breathing, and we'll keep this up the whole time, just naturally. And bring your attention to your heart space. And breathe into your heart. And this is a home in all of us of Mayor Baba's endless repository of his love, an endless fountain of his infinite love. It's always there for us. And breathe into this incredible, generous love. And the endless supply of it. And just take note of whatever you might feel or see as you do this.
And now picture somebody, choose somebody with your heart's guidance. Could be a person, even a group who you would like to share focused Baba's infinite love with. And a lot of you have heard me say that this can have amazing results in situations of conflict. But just whoever comes up for you that who you would like to share a focused sending of Baba's infinite love to them in their heart. Could be somebody you know is in struggle or a lot of challenge or just somebody you love and you'd love to send even more love. So get a clear image of whoever this is. And breathe in as you see them and you see their heart space. And again, take note of whatever you might see and feel as you do this. And breathing in as you keep your image of whoever it is, start to see Baba's infinite love generously flowing into them and their heart and their heart space. And I see this warm, liquid golden light just soothingly filling their heart and this love is healing forgiving and lightening and breathe in as you picture this infinite love from Baba generously filling their heart and every bit of it to overflowing. And remember, this is an infinite supply of love. We can never use it up. And it's always available. And see this love now even flowing through their heart and their heart space and filling every bit of their being. this bright golden light of love. And it's healing, cleansing.
forgiving, inspiring. And keep breathing in as you see this wonderful love just flowing and flowing. And we'll stay here another moment together in the flow of Baba's love. And now let's give thanks and being able to focus the flow of Baba's love to whoever you've chosen. And know that you can return here again and again. And we'll bid farewell to them for now. And gently bring your awareness back to your own heart space. And breathe in there. And notice whatever you might see or feel. And now let's picture Mayor Baba's infinite generous love flowing into and filling your own heart and heart space. Just warmly, steadily flowing in this soothing, cleansing, healing, forgiving love. And breathe in and notice what you might see and feel. And keep breathing in as you see and feel Baba's infinite love still filling 
and overflowing from your heart space and, and now flowing through and filling every bit of your being. We never know what wonders might come from this love. And breathe in as we stay here for another moment, seeing Mayor Baba's infinite love flow into and all the way through our hearts and heart spaces and all of our being. And now let's give thanks for the opportunity of being able to focus with Mayor Baba's infinite love and know that we can come back here again and again as an open invitation And gently start to bring yourself back to your surroundings and wherever you're sitting or laying. And take a little time to slowly come back. And when you're ready, open your eyes.
Well, if anybody would like to share anything, uh, I'd love to hear from you. I had an unusual experience today. Who I was sending love to wasn't someone I'd ever met before. Wow. And it felt like someone I would be meeting in more of a partnership way. And that was an incredible experience to have that human being, future partner. I mean, that's what it felt like. Um, that was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing, Cindy. Oh. Yes, yeah, so if you know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if you know this person or if this person is out in the ether somewhere. <laughs> I've never met this person before. It's 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 a human being, a man, and Baba was in him. I mean, so in him, and the love that I was experiencing, the lover and the beloved, in this form through Baba, in a time that has not yet existed in my life. That's that is amazing. You just had this today, just now. Just now. Wow. That's who my love went to. Was that your intention or did it just come to you? It just came. I mean, I had the regular cast of characters that I, you know, that I want to send to in my, in my life. And they were on the periphery, but Baba said, like, focus this. And I said, oh, okay. Wow, that's amazing. That, that is really amazing. Boy, I look forward to this happening. <laughs> Me too. You're all invited. <laughs> um, Stu, I'm curious about something. Did you do the golden pond this time and the, the gold uh, energy flowing in? Did I do it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So my experience was I, that I must have lost consciousness, which is really strange because I didn't hear any of that. Uh, I was just really peaceful and, and then it was going to be over. And what, wherever I was, I, I did not want to leave that um, peaceful spot. And uh, <laughs> I must have fallen asleep or something because normally I would hear everything you say. And I was surprised. I said, well, I wonder why he didn't talk about the golden flow of energy, but I guess I must have gotten in a different way. <laughs> when you have a golden glow around you there. <laughs> <laughs> that would the upper be left that. corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, and th this is what, what I see, you know, and if other people, if you see something different, yourselves and go go with it but um I'm, I'm drawn to say this you know and it, it's what i see you know and i i think i mentioned it in the past i got asked years ago to co-lead a an adult college program uh, as a practicum for adult social work students and Right before we started the first class, I was sitting with a professor who had invited me in, and I said, oh, gee, uh, just with my eyes closed with Baba. I said, I wonder, Baba, could you flood into this whole room and everybody here? And I, I was just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I saw this massive column of golden light internally just pour into the room and into every single student and the professor and me and I kind of got knocked backwards in my chair and the 
professor sitting with me, she, she, she felt it. She said it to me. I don't know what just happened, but I, I felt that. And it turned out to be an incredible year. But I, I asked Bob to flood in to the class. Beautiful, yeah. I, I was reading someplace um, in, in uh, either something in a Baba reading or something explaining about a pool. Um, having to do with the soul or something, but it reminded me of that pool of, of golden light that you talk, you've talked about that before too. Yeah. I wish I could remember the reference, but it related directly to some of the meditations that you were doing in, in terms of the imagery, you know, about dunking into this pool. Um, oh. I'm sorry. I can't think of the reference, but, um, it was this week that I, this week or the last couple of weeks that I saw it. And it reminded me of um, that image you talk about drinking out of the pool. I mean, you call in the, the golden yes. light and you talk about going to the pool and taking the drink. And um, I don't, maybe it was Hafiz. I don't know. It was something, something that um, reminded me. I'm sorry. I can't. Remember, I'll probably remember it in an hour or two. <laughs> Jeff probably remembers, but there is a quote from Baba no. about uh, it's like cleansing ourselves again and again is in his infinite ocean of, of love. And may, maybe it's the infinite pool too, Jeff. I, I don't remember right now, but he says you can never dirty the water yeah. in this. Just continually cleanse yourself right the taking a no. dip in his pool of love yeah, yeah. and uh, exactly. that's what it is and jeff yeah. what is that uh, I, I know you know if we have one of these young people you know uh, on the late night chat they just type it in and they got up just like that <laughs> <laughs> there's a pool within you you know yeah my love within i know you. that it, so it starts do not worry about your week Yes. Oh, well, I kind of, I say it a lot to myself. Do not yeah, worry about it. your weaknesses, yeah, even if it. they linger. <clears throat> well, I'm just saying it from memory. Okay. Eventually, they'll be dissolved in my pool of love. Come have a dip in my pool of love. Um, even if you wash it in it like a thousand times, it'll come clean. At the end of that is, but I remember Baba saying something like, how can, after all, how can I exercise my infinite compassion if there's nothing? Or maybe that comes from something else. Like those weaknesses are a way that Baba yeah. gets to express his infinite compassion. Yeah. Well, I'll share something I don't tell, but I'll do, I don't tell it ever, but I'll tell it now because it just, I'm struck to tell it. But I went to India in 1985. I went with Charles Haynes and a bunch of kids from the school that he was teaching and we all went up to the Samadhi together for the first time. And they had us move along, you know, there was like a little step up and then you could sit along the side um, at the top there, right at the, the level of the stone that covers Baba's Samadhi. So I was up there and people came in and, and they bowed. And when Charles came in, I just happened to have my eyes open and I saw this effulgence of light mm. just come like this over from the tomb and down on him as he bowed. Oh. So I've seen something of what I call, I would call it. I mean, I knew it. That's what it was. It was an effulgence of light. And it was clearly Baba's love embracing his lover. So uh, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> These wonderful things can happen. <laughs> I found a quote. Oh, okay. I found that quote and it's um, from That's How It Was. I love you. Do not worry about your weaknesses. Eventually they will go, even if they linger, love will one day consume them. 
everything disappears in the ocean of love. Because I love you, you have a pool of love within you. When you feel wretched, when you fall in your weaknesses, have a dip in that pool of love. Refresh yourself in that pool of my love within you. It is always there. Even if you wash your weaknesses every day in that pool, it will remain clear. Don't worry, Baba loves you. That is what really matters. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful statement. I had the opportunity to read it. Yes. I had the opportunity to read that to a woman in her last moments mm. who wasn't a Baba lover, but her daughter in law was. And I had brought with me, that's how it was. I just felt guided to do that. And that's what I opened up to. And that's what I read to her in some of her last moments. And I could feel the release of her soul for whatever she was holding on to. That was, and it was a pretty intense life that she had had. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, that was lovely. Yeah, we might have mentioned it, but that story of Baba giving a darshan and garlands are piling up on him and he's saying to the mandali near him, nobody's giving me what I want. And they're saying, well, what, what do you want? We'll get it. And he just said, nobody's giving me what I want. And what is it, Baba? Just tell us. And he said, I want your dirt. I want you to just put your dirt at my feet. <laughs> Yeah, he said, there's one thing I don't have, and that's your imperfections. Mm. I, I'm the personification of perfection, but there's one thing I don't have, your imperfections. Give me your imperfections. Mm -hmm. So he's asking for it. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so hard, because if you love someone, you don't want them to see your imperfections, so... You really have to be humble to, yeah, and and it you know it can it can take you through all kinds of emotions. I mean, you can feel shame, or you can feel. I mean, you can feel a million things, depending on who the person is. But <clears throat> who wants to admit their imperfections? <laughs> not not only that, <clears throat> but unloading them on Baba, not. <laughs> You know, but Erich, uh, you know, you probably heard me say, but Erich once said, give, give, let's uh, see, what did he say? Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll kind of go back. I mean, this is, <clears throat> this is back in the 70s. I, I said to Erich, what if I went out <clears throat> last night to a party and had a wild time and I got drunk and carried on and Baba, I knew Baba wouldn't be happy with me, but <clears throat> I was bound and determined, determined to do it. And this morning, uh, I feel miserable. I have a headache. Uh, I'm hungover. Now, I don't want to burden Baba with that. I'm willing to suffer that myself because it was my own choice from the night before. Does Baba want me to give him my hangover? And Eric said, yes, give him your hangover. And the embarrassment of having such a meager gift to give your beloved will inspire you next time to have something more precious to offer. But I said, still, isn't that a burden to Baba? He said, and this is, this is the line, he said, brother, it is a greater burden to Baba to withhold anything from him than to throw on him the worst of yourself. I mean, and who wants to burden the beloved, you know, but it's a greater burden <clears throat> to withhold it, withhold the burden. That's I a, can that's see that just in a practical, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Go ahead, yeah. I can see that in a practical karma sense that what, I, what I've learned to do over these past many years is when I'm angry or resentful or even longing for someone that's dropped their body or whatever it might be to interface with that with Baba. And sometimes it's, it's not pleasant. It's like, you know, I hate you, Baba, how you show up, you know, and I'll swear and 
all of that. And, but I think that if I'm doing that energetically or verbally to another person, there's karmic attachments that, you know, yeah. yeah. Found. And if I'm working it out with Baba, the impressionless one, it, it goes. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That, that's a hurdle to go over, you know, to actually burden your beloved, even though overall it's less burden for, for everyone concerned, you know, <clears throat> to, yeah. To... Jeff, I like that story you told about the, the glasses, you know, that kept popping. Um, oh, dear. What is it? Uh, when the restaurant, when you go, the conveyor belt. Yeah. That conveyor belt story. Oh yeah. Plates. Well, I'll, let's plates? take that for another time. Yeah, the 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 plates. Yeah, uh, the plates. Cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, that's another whole story. We'll we'll get to that sometime. <laughs> Just keep giving Bob Thank the you plates. <clears throat> Thank you all. Yeah. Hey, thank you. And thank you. Uh, it's always wonderful to hear from you. You're you know, you're you you contribute beautifully. Thank you. What a blessing yeah. to be part of you guys. Yeah. To have Baba yeah, tap us yeah. on the shoulder this yeah. time. Mm -hmm. but Jeff, is this the day that Bal dropped his body? I mean, we had the we had the program about Balji today. Is yeah, it, it was the day before yesterday, I think. Two days ago. Yeah. Two days ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was I a great think. program today. Yeah. Well, mm. I think, what do you think, Stu? Yeah. I think we're ready to uh, rejoin life. <laughs> and let you have dinner. Or at least have dinner. Food. Yeah, yeah time for Jeff's dinner. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, great Thank to you, see Stu. all of you. Thank you, yeah. Stu. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Marsha. Thank you all. Thank you.